Hi, I'm Brett Gurney, and today you are going to hear the story of Emulin, told by the creator himself, Dr. Joseph Ahrens. Dr. Ahrens is, is going to go through a series of events, what he was working on, what he was doing, and the process that took him um, to the discovery of the Emulin product, what we know today as Emulin Plus. Uh, it, is a, it is a great story. I think that you'll enjoy it. And of course, now today we have people who are getting life-changing results on this product. So enjoy the video and we will see you when it's over. Thank you. We're going to get started by asking Dr. Joe to actually tell us who he is and what took him down this path and how it was that he and his partner developed this product that we're so excited about. So, Dr. Joe Ahrens calling us directly from the Bahamas. The floor is yours, Doctor. Okay, can you hear me well? How is this? This is great. All okay. right. Yeah, good. Well, um, I am an uh, animal and plant physiologist. That's uh, the study of life at the cellular level. And uh, like many researchers like myself, I started out at the University of California, Davis, and uh, eventually went through some positions and was uh, head of uh, technology and consumer, consumer services for Green Giant Fresh. And I w ended up at the, uh, as director of research for the Florida Department of Citrus. Florida is my home state, and so when I got an invitation to come direct that facility. Uh, living in California at the time, I went ahead and uh, moved back to Florida. And my main job was to bring that research facility to a commercial level and to promote citrus through good research. And of course, uh, health is the number one reason that People have always consumed orange juice, so I started to focus on that. One day, a uh, fellow in the citrus industry walked into my office, and, and he was his family were uh, involved in the grapefruit business. And he had developed a grapefruit powder that he was promoting people to take for health benefits for those people that did not want to eat grapefruit. He just thought grapefruit is so great, great grapefruit, that we need to get it to people however they will take it. I said, well, what can we do here to promote grapefruit? And we started brainstorming and came up with the, really the memory that every time there was a news article about the so-called grapefruit diet, Sales of grapefruit went up. And I said to uh, this guy, whose name is Daryl Thompson, who is now uh, was my partner, I said, well, why don't we put together a scientific study to prove it or not? We ran the risk that if we did a good study, we would disprove it. But I thought there was enough uh, circumstantial evidence to go ahead with a test like that. So we designed the study, and we actually had all of this done back in California. We shipped grapefruit and grapefruit juice and grapefruit powder back to California and had the Scripps Institute conduct the study to see if there was a such thing as real weight loss associated with grapefruit juice. Yes, there was. After three months, it was very conclusive that grapefruit by itself, with no other factor, caused weight loss, and there was a change in insulin activity. Well, for me, that was very interesting as a physiologist. That meant that there was a physiological effect. It wasn't just due to satiety, which means just making you feel satisfied and filled up. There was something going on biochemically with something inside grapefruit. So I approached the Florida Department of Citrus and said, we need to find out what this is. 
And there was not a strong interest to do that. They just wanted to promote it. They didn't need to know the underlying uh, physiological effects, but I did. So actually at that point, my partner and I formed the current company, ATM Metabolics. This was back in 2003. And we spent the next uh, four or five years investigating what was inside grapefruit. Well, it was very surprising that we found out that it was not just grapefruit, but any plant, particularly plants that originated in the tropics, every time there was a high carbohydrate load, there was also a couple of related compounds, which we now call sugar chaperones as an easy term to use. We looked across all of the plant kingdom and found that every time there was a high carbohydrate load, there were these also sugar chaperones. So we stepped into a second phase of the work and identified the most powerful one, the most efficacious ones. And we came up with, uh, after doing some animal studies and a lot of computer programming, we came up with three that seemed to be the most powerful, and between the three of them, they appear to completely regulate carbohydrate metabolism. We have come now to our hypothesis that is our scientific guess, which we're working on every day to turn into a, uh, push it into a fact, in that nature intended you to eat sugar along with these cofactors. If you, uh, if you consume refined sugar, pure sugar from whatever source, this includes bread, pastas, table sugar, syrups, biscuits, cereals. If you consume any of those by themselves, the body thinks it's a poison. Because in nature, mostly sugar is either a poison or it's a food source. How does the body know the difference? It knows it because if you were to consume these raw products, you would be getting some of these sugar chaperones. And those sugar chaperones direct the sugar to where it needs to go, that is in your brain and into your muscle tissue, and it prevents it from going into fat tissue and being recognized as a poison. So we no longer get these, these cofactors from citrus. So this is not a citrus product. These are pure molecules that we extract from nature. And we currently, there's three of them, we currently get them from certain grapes, onions, and green coffee. Technically, they are mericetin, quercetin, and chlorogenic acid. These three do not occur together in nature, not in any single plant. So we were able to get patents. We have 13 patents either issued or pending worldwide. So these three products together, which now we call emulin, they regulate sugar in your body. When they so um, we started to market this product and put it into traditional channels like CBS, GNC, and they sat on the shelf. And we realized we really just have to be able to tell the story because if somebody understands what I'm saying here, this is just like discovering a new vitamin, essential for your health and vitality. And if we had made this discovery in like the 40s or 50s or 60s. The recording has it, started. It would have 
become a vitamin. But now the regulations are different, and you can't discover new vitamins. That's just how the governments have decided to do. So <clears throat> we think it's a vitamin. It should have been a vitamin. And people ask me, is this a vitamin? I say, well, it's got all the parameters of a vitamin. Furthermore, even if you went out and ate a whole raw food, unprocessed, you still could not get enough because they are completely bred out of our plants now. We were never looking for them, so they, they've fallen by the side. Now we have increased sugar and increased size, so we have no more of these sugar chaperones in any quantity. Eat them if you ate several kilograms of dark grapes every day, and you ate a bushel of onions a day, and you took all the coffee you could, you could never get enough compared to the amount of sugar we have in our diets. So it is a perfect supplement. And here we are. We're talking here on the phone today just for that. Well, that's, uh, that's a fascinating story, and many of us are very excited and thankful that uh, you took that journey. One of the questions that often comes up, uh, in addition to the ones I've sent you, is this whole issue of the Nobel nominee um, that you and your partner received uh, two distinct ones. And I went on the Nobel site and did some research and found out that the nominees are kept secret for at least 50 years in each category. So unless you tell us how it, it happened, we would not find out any, anything more about it. So could you take a moment and, and tell us how it happened that you were nominated in 2015 for medicine and 2016 for the Peace Prize? Well, it was a surprise to me, too. I I mean, it was uh, a, quite a shock. Uh, but we started with these basic compounds and knew we were on to a very basic tenet in health care. If we are right and we know we are, the basis of many diseases that we are fighting right now is due to the body's perception of carbohydrates as a poison. So that's quite a major discovery. And on top of that, we, were, we had previously done some work with retroviruses about 10 years ago, and the... Uh, the U.S. government came to us and asked us if we could look into Ebola and dengue virus and a couple other viruses because uh, there was some overlap in the research. Now, Ebola is really just supercharged influenza. Oh. It attacks these cells the same way it uses the same mechanism to get into the cell. It replicates the same way inside the cell, and then it releases the same way. The difference is it causes an inhibition of cell cohesion factor. In other words, your body melts. So you have all the flu symptoms, but then your body melts. We already figured out earlier with the retrovirus work of how to inhibit some of these viruses uh, test, actually, at the uh, University of Texas Level 4 Laboratory, and we were successful in knocking down Ebola, like 90%. And a big advantage to this mythology is um, it needs no refrigeration. So therefore, we thought we were going to give this away to people in Western Africa. I actually have done a lot of work previously uh, before Green Giant. I did a lot of work in Mali, for instance, and southwest of West Africa. And uh, it's just one of the things we decided to do, you know. Here's this product. We didn't start out to treat Ebola. And uh, let's just give it away. And a couple of people heard about that. and. Uh, thought that was a pretty nifty idea. So for 
at least those two main reasons, um, we got nominated by the, uh, I don't know if I want to say his name, but it was a former no. deputy, uh, 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 he was under uh, Coop, Dr. Coop, former Oak Surgeon yeah. General of the U.S. Or the U.S., exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, was, that was in 2016, is that correct? Uh, that was in 15. And, um, and the first one was in 14 then? Uh, for, for medicine. Yeah, the way it works is the uh, prizes are given out in... in uh, they close in February, but they open in October, so they're a year off, just like the football championship. So right. mm -hmm. the 15 is the one that's awarded in 16 and the 14. So I think that it is, this was 15 and 16. Yeah, 15 and 16. The first one was for uh, the work on Ebola and the fact that we wanted to give the treatment away. And it's not a vaccine. It just uh, shuts down. Uh, the inflammatory response, and then the other one was for uh, yeah, medicine or physiology. So we didn't know about it either until they called me up and said, "Hey, I'm just going to tell you about this." And they sent us the email where where we were nominated. Yes, they don't really supposed to tell anybody for 50 years, and that's to yeah. avoid uh, jealousies in the trade. Well, that that's that's a wonderful story. Okay, thanks for watching the video. I hope you got something out of that. Okay, I hope that you uh, have a much better understanding now of what emulin is and how it works in your body and what it can do for you. And if you have a desire to get involved with our emulin or our team in any way, in any capacity, I'll get all your questions answered and we'll just take it from there. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.